Whatever we do, whether we cross a road, whether we pay attention to not be overrun, or whether we are just mind-wandering, all of this is organized and programmed by our brains. And the brain is really the most fascinating but also the most complex organ that evolution has brought forth. But how it functions is still really one of the greatest riddles. Researchers are working around the world to decipher its mysteries. And here, at the Ernst Strungmann Institute in Frankfurt am Main, scientists are also doing their part to understand the foundations of thought. Wolf Singer is one of the researchers here. For scientists to be able to really acquire new knowledge, they need embedding in a specific environment. This environment needs them to offer calmness and a very complex infrastructure, but at the same time, they must have the opportunity to meet colleagues in a very intense way. And for those prerequisites, the Anstrengman Institute offers optimal conditions. How do interactions between nerve cells create perception? What is attentiveness? How does consciousness come to be? These kinds of questions drive research at the Ernst Strungmann Institute and excite researchers like Patrick Jendritzer. I've been a PhD student at the Institute since 2015. And basically I'm investigating how vision works. So I'm trying to understand how the signals that come through the eyes to our brain are processed and give rise to perception. The human brain consists of 86 billion nerve cells, almost the number of stars in the Milky Way. Scientists here at the Ernst Strungmann Institute observe communication between individual cells or parts of the brain. They try to understand how these coordinated activities between them can lead to higher cognitive functions, like attentiveness, memory, or consciousness. People often ask me, why are you doing this? What is the purpose of this? And the answer is that we are doing basic research here. So we're trying to understand basic facts about the brain. And this is really important because anything we learn about a healthy brain can help us to potentially understand diseases better and cure them in the future. The institute, called ESI, came about thanks to the generosity of a foundation set up in 2008 by brothers Andreas and Thomas Strungmann. The institute was set up to advance research of the brain. Founding director Wolf Singer was around for the very beginnings. This is indeed a fairy tale. A large institute that is entirely devoted to basic research and financed with private means is an absolute uh, rare institution in Germany, at least. The history. The twin brothers, Andreas and Thomas Strungmann, inherited from their father a small pharmaceutical company and developed this small business after they had rebaptized it into Hexal to a, a worldwide um, enterprise that was specialized for the generation of um, or production of generica. So those are drugs whose uh, patents have expired. And when they sold this business, um, they decided to take part of the income to give back to science what they had inherited from science, namely knowledge, which made them big, which was the basis of the success of this enterprise. And so they decided to found an institute, and this is how the Anstrengmann Institute came about, the institute that bears the name of their father. The institute is financially and legally independent, but is closely linked to the Max Planck Society scientifically. It's run and operated according to the principles guiding a Max Planck Institute. The Max Planck Society appoints ESI directors and regularly oversees the quality of research done there. This organizational structure comes with many advantages. In the very beginning, things were really adventurous. We had a plan, we had the money, but we had no space. We had no place to go. Now, fortunately, the Max Planck Institute for Brain Research was about to move into a new building. And because we have good relations to the Max Planck Society, they were ready to give us the old building in order to found easy within the old premises. 
the ESI has since moved into much more spacious facilities, which meet the high demands of a modern brain research institute. The German state of Hessen provided 30 million euro to support construction of these new facilities. Pascal Fries is the ESI's director. The private funding is one of the reasons for our success. It gives us flexibility. Equally important is the cooperation with the Max Planck Society, which ensures the necessary embedding in a very stimulating research environment. The fact that we receive additional financial support by the state of Hessen makes us very proud and it shows that the state of Hessen really pays a premium on fundamental research. Together, this gives the foundation on the basis of which we can conduct excellent research. Eventually, the ESI is meant to provide working space for 150 people. Many different research groups are already working here using a wide variety of methods. There are psychologists, programmers, biologists, physicists and medical physicians. To cross disciplines, a scientist only needs to go down the hall. So what's really special about the AZ is that there's a lot of collaboration instead of competition. And you can see that, for instance, in the fact that we have a central data infrastructure where um, all the different groups can um, uh, look at their data. We're also sharing a lot of scientific equipment between the groups and there's a lot of rooms for people to actually get together and collaborate on certain projects. So that's really nice. This is a crucial aspect for Marta Nari Havanit. The young scientist is forming her own team of researchers, together with her colleague, Marieke Schörlwink. Both of them profit, and not least of all, from the cooperation between the Ernst Strungmann Institute and the Max Planck Society. The scientists' salaries are covered by the Max Planck Society, while facilities and equipment come from the ESI. The fact that Marika and me are leading our research group together is actually a really new idea and I think very few places would have supported such a new uh, way of doing things in the way that the ESI has. Um, so that's really special to us. Um, our research group is interested in how uh, monkeys and mice process visual information and what could the similarities be and the differences. Um, and so in order to find that out you really have to record from individual neurons. So you can't do that in humans. And all the more important is the question, which behaviors and which types of neural processing can you really compare between different species? And the ESI, very luckily, is already working both with monkeys and with mice. And the animals uh, live under really, really great conditions here, which is important both to us personally and also for our particular research project, because we really want to look at natural behaviors, like, for example, uh, foraging for food. And you really can't do that when animals don't feel well. Cooperation is important, but not only within the institute. Institute employees don't necessarily have to travel far to work on external collaborative projects. Around us there are several really outstanding research institutions. Directly next to us there is the Neuroscience Center of the Goethe University and the clinics for neurology and psychiatry. On the other side of the river mine there is the Max Planck Institute for Brain Research and the Max Planck Institute for Empirical Aesthetics, the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies and the University. We are in vivid exchange with all of them. We are of course still far away from really understanding how the brain works, but we work on it. And for me as an old guy, it is of course an immense pleasure to see that here we have created a place where the next generation can contribute to solving this riddle step by step.